Animal life on Earth goes back millions of years. Yet most species only use three to five percent of its cerebral capacity. But it isn't until we reached human beings at the top of the animal chain that we finally see a species use more of its cerebral capacity. If life starts approximately a billion years ago, one neuron, you're alive, two neurons, you're moving. And with movement, interesting things begin to happen. 10% may not seem like much, but it's a lot if you look at all we've done with it. If we could access, let's say, 20% of our brain's capacity, this first stage would give us access to and control of our own body. Well, the next stage would probably be control of other people. But for that, we would need to access at least 40% of our brain's capacity. After control of ourselves and others, come control of matter. If its habitat is not sufficiently favorable or nurturing, the cell will choose immortality. In other words, self-sufficiency and self-management. Everything's different now, like sounds or music that I can understand, like fluids. It's funny, I used to be so concerned with who I was and what I wanted to be, and now that I have access to the furthest reaches of my brain, I see things clearly and realize that what makes us us, it's primitive. They're all obstacles. Film a car speeding down a road. Speed up the image infinitely, and the car disappears. So what proof do we have of its existence? Time gives legitimacy to its existence. Time is the only true unit of measure. Without time, we don't exist. But what would happen if, for some reason, we ignore somebody and lock 100% of the cerebral capacity? 100%? Yes. I have no idea.